It is likely the most recognizable container in your bathroom cabinet, that little blue jar with the yellow lid. We use it for everything, chapped lips, dry skin, minor burns, and even removing makeup. It feels clean, safe, and soothing. But what if I told you that this pure, translucent jelly was discovered as a black, sticky nightmare clogging up oil drills in the 19th century? The substance you trust on your skin is quite literally a cousin of the gasoline you put in your car. So how do we get from a dirty industrial oil pit to the crystal clear jelly found in millions of homes? Welcome to Simple Things, Surprising Histories. Today, we are digging into the slippery history and the surprising science of how Vaseline is made. The story begins in 1859 in Titusville, Pennsylvania, the site of America's very first oil boom. A young British chemist named Robert Chesborough traveled there hoping to strike it rich in the oil business. But Chesborough didn't find a fortune in oil. Instead, he found a nuisance. As he walked among the oil derricks, he watched the roughnecks cursing at a thick, black, paraffin-like goo that kept clogging up their drilling rods. They called it rod wax. To the drillers, it was trash that stopped the machines. But Chesborough noticed something strange. While the workers hated the rod wax for the machines, they loved it for themselves. If a worker cut or burned his skin during the dangerous work, he would smear the black sludge on the wound. They swore it stopped the bleeding and helped them heal faster. Chesborough was fascinated. He abandoned his oil dreams, scraped buckets of this black sludge into jars, and took it back to his lab in Brooklyn. He was determined to turn this industrial waste into a medicine. Back in Brooklyn, Chesborough had a problem. Rod wax worked, but it smelled like rotten fuel and looked like tar. No one was going to put that on their face. He spent the next decade perfecting a process of extraction and purification. He needed to separate the heavy, waxy agents from the thin, volatile oils. His original method involved vacuum distillation. He would heat the sludge, but not to the point of burning. By carefully controlling the temperature, he could evaporate the lighter particles. But the real secret was filtration. Chesborough ran the remaining substance through bone black, which is essentially charred animal bone. This charcoal acted as a superfilter, trapping the impurities, the dark color, and that terrible smell. By 1870, he had it, a white, odorless, tasteless gel. He called it Vaseline, a combination of the German word for water, Wasser, and the Greek word for oil, Elion. So that is the history, but how is it made today? We certainly aren't scraping it off oil drills by hand anymore. Today, the process is strictly controlled by science. It all starts with crude oil. When crude oil is sent to a refinery, it undergoes fractional distillation. Imagine a giant tower where oil is boiled. Different parts of the oil boil at different temperatures. Gasoline separates at the top, while heavier oils sink to the bottom. Vaseline comes from the heavier, waxy residue left behind, similar to the rod wax of the 1800s, but harvested much more cleanly. This residue is then sent through a high-pressure vacuum distillation process. This strips away any remaining liquids. Finally, it goes through triple purification. The jelly is filtered through pharmaceutical-grade absorbents to ensure there are absolutely no carcinogens or impurities left. It is melted, tested for consistency, and cooled into the famous gel structure that melts at exactly body temperature. Robert Chesborough believed in his creation so much that he famously ate a spoonful of Vaseline every single day until he died at the ripe old age of 96. While we definitely don't recommend eating it, it's fascinating to know that the pure, simple product on your shelf started its life deep underground. If you enjoyed this slippery slide into history, please give this video a like and subscribe to Simple Things – Surprising Histories for more stories about the everyday objects around us. Thanks for watching.